If there's one thing that 2022 taught us, it's that life isn't cheap. Everything went up, even the medication. Holy crap, it takes me, um, you know, $30 just to eat lunch. I just keep looking and seeing my retirement getting farther and farther and farther away. Affordability challenges that steadily mounted through the year but can be traced back to well before it began. Canada's inflation rate dipped dramatically in the early stages of the pandemic when there were lockdowns and less economic activity. But it rebounded to above 3% in 2021 as the country slowly reopened. By January 2022, it was above 5%. I remember exactly one year ago thinking, OK, 2.5% two, two inflation, 3%, that's just catching up from the no inflation in 2020, you know, early pandemic, everything was shut down, prices didn't rise. So a little bit extra seemed like just catching up and then it just kept climbing and climbing. This economist calls it the pandemic whiplash effect. He says as people became comfortable spending money again, supply chains were backed up. Uh, it just was really hard to ramp everything back up then. And when the supply isn't there and the demand is there, the prices will go up. By the middle of February, grocery store owners were already feeling the squeeze, slashing profit margins and passing the buck onto consumers. We have seen a bit of a pushback, especially from the old pensioners who have limited income. Then a major global conflict. Russia struck at the heart of Ukraine's second largest city, laying waste to Russia's claim it's only targeting military sites. Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February, the beginning of a major humanitarian crisis that would ripple through the global economy. That created challenges in the food, uh, in the food system because Ukraine is ex exporting so much wheat. And then on top of that, there was an oil price um, hike and um, it just all came together at, the, at, at one point at a time when supply was, was particularly constrained. World sanctions on Russian oil led to fuel companies charging more and more at the pump. By March in Metro Vancouver, gas prices broke through the dreaded $2 per liter barrier. Gas price is really too high. Can't even afford to you know, drive it. I don't remember the last time I uh, filled my whole tank up. A surge in fuel costs that continued to drive up the price of just about everything else. Well, if you've noticed the cost of everyday items going up in B.C., you're not alone. By March, inflation rates rose to 6.7 percent, a number not seen in 31 years. After repeat calls by many on the province to do something, BC's premier offered a little relief. We're giving money back to the policyholders, the people who finance ICBC. $110 checks for insurance holders that were criticized as doing little to solve a mounting affordability crisis. What they're not doing is investing that money into longer term solutions that actually do solve affordability crises. 2020, this pack of uh, hickory smoked turkey went for 5.67, and now it's 6.49. Through the spring, inflation kept rising before it peaked at 8.1 percent in June, forcing the Bank of Canada to try to rein it in. Inflation is too high, and more people are getting more worried that high inflation is here to stay. We cannot let that happen. The benchmark interest rate was raised by a full percentage point in June. The thing is that what that does is it, hurt, it hurts the economy. It hurts purchasing power. It hurts people who are trying to get into the housing market. It hurts business trying to invest. Um, but that's sort of the point. Steady rate increases in the months that followed slowed BC's real estate market, while many debt holders and recent home buyers faced repeated spikes in monthly payments. We're just tightening the belt. Um, we stopped dining out, uh, started sale shopping, coupon clipping, like, like you know, we had to do in, in the old times, you know. Um, you know, we stopped investing in our kids' RESPs. Rates that also put upward pressure on already sky-high rents by both forcing landlords to charge more and increasing competition. That we've seen rents skyrocket. And I think that rents in particular parts of the city have seen, you know, 
five, 10, 15% increases, I think, through which has also, again, added pressure to households in metropolitan Vancouver. As many residents and businesses limp to the end of the year, some encouraging signs. Inflation has dropped to about 7%. Fuel prices are also down. But experts say it's tough to predict what 2023 will hold. It's a time of precarity, perhaps, that it, it, is, it is one that is murky, that it isn't necessarily, I think, one of sunshine along the path. Still, the Bank of Canada warns there could be more interest rate hikes in the new year as the country inches closer to a recession. This is going to be, I think, something to watch in terms of how businesses adapt, how home builders adapt, and just how the general public adapts towards an era when credit is not as available, but yet also more expensive. Necessary pains, experts say, will eventually bring inflation back down to normal levels. The question isn't will it come down, the question is how much pain will it take along the way. And we're all hoping for less, but eventually the inflation will back down. When that might be is up for debate, so why not be optimistic heading into the new year? I'm optimistic towards 2023 because we have a few other choices. <laughs> that, that I think that part of it is really how the rest of the world looks, and yet at the same time, I think recognizing the graces and really the blessings we do have living in metropolitan Vancouver and in British Columbia. Staying hopeful for cheaper days ahead might not be easy, but at least it's free. John Hernandez, CBC News, Vancouver.